Yoo-hoo. It's the time for Beckett from China. Hey, hey, welcome back to the channel. It's awesome that you're tuning in. So today's video, we are going to take a close look at the Gamebox D3 classic game system with 500 games built in. There are all kinds of different versions and you're going to, going to get yourself the red, the blue, the green and the white version. But wait, hey, what? I can't remember that I ordered the red version, but also called the sub. Yeah, I have nothing to do with sub. That is what they do over there. Just slapping some random stuff on it. But I do wonder, does the... Oh, this doesn't really look like the same blue, like the picture, but you have all kinds of different versions and didn't even came with the controller that was on the box. So this is absolutely in disaster, in my opinion. Uh, man, this is what they do sometimes, but doesn't matter, maybe, maybe it's still good. Let's put it that way. Let's take a close look at the toy, the paper manual, because there is nothing much in the inside. But even English, so this doesn't really start great. We're going to get ourselves a cable, and I mean the AV out cable, because you can plug this thing into your television. The battery has been implemented. That is a BL5C old school Nokia battery, 1020 milliamp. But I find it very convenient. These things are dirty cheap. So if it gets broken or you want to have a couple of replacements, you can buy them from AliExpress. Dirty, dirty cheap. Okay, and you don't have an option to add normal batteries but i think that is not a bad thing let's remove the screen protector and let's see what we're actually going to get with the overall quality so when it comes to the weight this thing does have a very nice weight to it not to the point that it's too heavy reset select start a b x or x and oh man this completely messed up the layout so we don't have d-pad we have an analog stick i think that's one of the new features with the previous models we didn't add that at all so the form factor you can see it has a very nice form factor to it and it feels quite comfortable but i can already tell you this thing has been made very cheaply one of the key things that is going to be completely messed up so when actually pressing button over here you can see the other one is moving so that is one of those indication in my opinion that this is a really cheap form factor and they are using really bad overall controls on this thing but at the front we're also going to get a tiny speaker i really wonder how freaking loud it is so here we're going to get the uh, nos switch a micro usb for charging and the headphone jack out and also we're going to get ourselves the micro usb cable a very cheap one doesn't matter for charging we're going to get ourselves or we're not going to get anything but what you can do is get yourself a cheap five volt charger and you can just charge the device like this within a couple of hours. Playtime will be also depending on the battery quality and how much milliamp they're giving you. But most of the time you can play in a couple of hours on and charge. But yeah, it's clear that they put the battery in and turn it on because this freaking thing is already empty. Of course. Okay, so let's charge it and just try it. The unfortunate thing is when it comes to these game systems, yeah, they're showing a controller on the box. And I wish they had sent me the complete version because I ordered it particular one. And yeah, finding a controller with a micro USB, it is possible, but if it's going to be working, that is not a problem. The display quality, it's the same that we have seen many times before, so there is nothing new over there. So when it comes to the volume, also this is not bad at all. When you're going to put them on 80, 90, and 100%, the speaker is completely sounding rubbish. So that's a fact. And one of the things I really hate about these things is the language settings. And the reason why is because, oh man, every single time you reset it, you need to choose the language and the Chinese is on top. So it's absolutely horrible. But let's take a close look at the English game list. But it's kind of cool to see that we do have two different game lists, a different icon. We're going to get eight games on this list and also on this. There's no difference over there. Okay, so when it comes to these game list, I don't get it why they don't implement alphabetic order. You can see there are a lot of different games on here. A lot of classic ones. Spartan X is one of those things. I also wonder how is the overall emulation performance of this thing because it's sometimes really bad to the point that the audio is completely messed up. But when they're saying 501, this is just the same shenanigans that we have seen before. But a lot of weird homebrew games. And don't forget, they are slapping double gaze on this. But if you go to be focusing on one particular like title, you will see this title a couple of times in the list. And that is what they do. They did it back in the 80s, 90s with those really old school multi game cars. Think about the 10,000 one and all this like a nonsense. But now they still keep doing it only with lower numbers. 
Nevertheless, let's take a close look at some gameplay and actually see how good it is or how bad. Some of the games, even like Super Contra, has the option to have an implemented, like say, cheat mode. Here you can see we're having different kind of cheats. So for example, I want to have the shotgun the full game. You can just actually boot up the game this way and just play it. I think it's a very cool, neat thing. I guess I also remember back in the day we had this with the uh, multi-game cards. And if you, so far I understand, if you die, you will go to get yourself the spread shot again. I think there's also no possibility to get the different weapon. Here you can see, like, we're still having the spread shot. And the other button I'm moving is the turbo. To make it even more cheesy. To make it even more cheating. <laughs> we're gonna just go maximize spread shot mode. <laughs> but a lot of familiar games like Street Fighter 2010, not the same stuff that we have seen before. Let's say with the official ones I've picked up from the local stores. The downside is when it comes to these, let's say, cheaper handhelds, recording is not a big problem because we can put the camera in the right angle but playing it from a view different viewing angle is absolutely a nightmare so you need to be sitting in front of it all the freaking time but so far i can tell is that we do overall have a very good performance i do hear some interference actually playing with the analytic i really need to get used to it it's a slider joystick, like with the PlayStation Portable, I'm not a biggest fan of those. I wish they added the one from the Nintendo Switch. Because I can get really used to it very quickly. But so far so good, if I want to play one of my favorite games, I can just do it without any hassle. Everything is better than having a D-pad that is absolutely rubbish. Because that is an overall problem with these cheap devices. That we go get such a horrible experience with the D-pad that makes these things unplayable. Let's see if we're going to get to the end boss. No, oh, no hugging. Cheating with the turbo button. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, no, stay away. No, no, no. Yeah. The next stage is a really a freaking annoying stage. So one of the hit or miss with these things are the overall AV out quality. And oh man, this looks really bad. And of course, I'm using it on an LCD. So this is not the best way to combine some AV output. But I don't know if the camera does it really justice, but this is, looks really pixelated. But also it looks really bad when it comes to the letters and everything. And this is absolutely a great indication that the AVO signal that is from this thing is really, really bad. So it's a little bit of a bummer because I have seen some licensed ones that have very crisp clear through the old school AV out. So this is just a moment that they, they are really trying to cheap out with some of these things. But what is cool that we can actually play some games. The display itself doesn't do anything. But I just want to do a quick gameplay. Let's see if the battery is ready charged. There we go. So if you bring this thing on vacation with you, it's pretty damn cool to play the games. There is no screen tearing going on. All the sound effects are here. I do wonder if I can adjust the volume. No, with this particular product, I cannot adjust the volume at all. So it's a very cool feature. So if you're going to be unplugging it, it goes back to the display itself. Plug it back in and you can just play without it doing a lot of messing with settings. So the overall idea of this thing is pretty damn cool. We have seen it before, so it's nothing new. But if you have seen it, never seen it before, it's time to subscribe to the channel and hit the little bell. Well, let's rip this thing apart and see how it looks in the inside. Did it improve anything here? So one of the features I already mentioned a couple of times is this new, let's say, analog control or like slider control. It's new. That is something I didn't see many times before. Most of them, they're just using D-pads. But let's take a close look inside of the machine because these things are super easy to maintain or have some maintenance on if needed. So this is one huge piece of B over here. And it must say that it looks kind of weird so there's only one screw holding this thing in place so let's remove this particular one all right and then of course we're going to get the sticky tape that holds the speaker in place all right let's be gentle because i want to put it back in position when done we can just 
slide it out most of the time but the next thing we need to do is turn it around rip this thing off and then we can remove everything over here so let's see if there is anything new so when it comes to the membranes or the rubberized things they're like using the cheap translucent version but okay that's what we're going to get with a cheap device so one of the improvements they implemented that we there's still a screw on my screw whatever so one of the things that they improved is that we're going to get ourselves a ruined cable now attached to this because in the previous model they seriously like soldered it straight into the freaking main board so this is the spacer or this foam that basically keeps the display away from the chip but also not only the chip it also gives it the, the perfect height and we're going to get a black blob the chip itself that will contain some files they try to mark it so we cannot really read what is on there one of the things i wanted to see is like when this thing was actually like produced is this a brand new version so there's even version 1.0 there's no production date maybe on the lcd itself no not really but the main problem is if we're having a broken LCD, the main problem with these LCDs, I finding a different one is more expensive than actually the system itself. So yeah, replacing, hmm. no. And the same goes for a couple of like say components. Like, of course you can resold an, a new joystick if you want to, if it's needed. But okay, so when it comes to this particular product, I can tell you that I am a little bit disappointed. Already in the beginning of this video, I mentioned that I wanted to have the red version. I wanted to have complete width controller, simply because I just wanted to see what this new sub game box is all about. Is there anything new, uh, anything improved? So I can tell you the overall, let's say, controls is way better than the previous models. The analog stick, the slider joystick, I am not a biggest fan of it, but it does play quite nice. They still have this freaking annoying rubbish menu. What they should do, in my opinion, is like when you go to boot up the menu they can get switching between languages inside here and it also needs to save make quick loads quick save everything like that is not in here just just back to the roots back to the retro gaming with new features thank you all for watching consider subscribing hit the little bell and it will be great to see you in the next video